welcome to my wonderful knitting life. My name is Margaret and I am the host of this channel. This channel is mostly a knitting channel, but I also like to add other crafty goodness into my chats and sometimes I add a few things that are going on in my life. So welcome to those of you who are new to this channel and welcome back to those of you who have been watching me for a little while. Uh, this month is my one year anniversary. So at the end of my segment today, I will be showing you a few prizes to celebrate that. And I will be asking you which one you would like and to add a comment in at the bottom, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, another thing I want to mention is that I am on Instagram at my wonderful knitting life and I also have a few videos in a channel called Cozy Cottage Hideaway and those videos pertain to a few things going on at the cottage. We haven't put a lot there but there's a few things that are fun to watch if you're interested. So today I'm going to share an update on my Albertine jacket by Sitzel Hoivik. I am doing some steaking and some sleeve knitting, so I will share that with you. I have joined a very small cow, and I'm going to talk about some future knits and a couple of podcasters that I'm watching. At the very end of this segment, I have pre-recorded um, about, I'm not sure how long it is, maybe 15 minutes, a segment with my oldest daughter, who is an avid knitter and she has wonderful skills and she's going to share some of her knits uh, with us. So stay tuned. All right, uh, let's get started with what I'm wearing. I haven't shown this on the podcast before. Um, so I'll, I'll start with that. This is a sweater that I think I knit maybe 15 years ago. It's quite an old one. Um, I got this pattern and the yarn as a kit from Mary Maxim, which is an online uh, ordering store in Ontario. They also, they have an in-person store. I've never been to it, but you can uh, order online and they have a catalog as well that you can uh, request in the mail. And just so you know, um, it's a snow day today. I'm a teacher in a small northern town in Quebec. And we have a stay at home order right now. The highway is closed going both ways and we've been asked to stay at home. It's a white out outside. I'll see if I can add a couple of pictures. Uh, if you've never experienced a true blizzard, it's pretty interesting. Uh, we're looking at uh, 40 to 60 centimeters of snow in about a 16 hour span with over 90 kilometer hour winds. So uh, what do knitters do in that situation? We bear down, we get our knits out, and I have the time to do a podcast. So this sweater that I'm wearing is called the Yoke Pullover by Mary Maxim. It is in a worsted weight, and the yarn is by Mary Maxim, and it is called Alpaca Tweed. And if I remember correctly, it is 20% alpaca, and the rest is a synthetic, I think probably an acrylic. It's very soft for someone who maybe has allergies to uh, too much wool or prickly wool. This yarn would be uh, a really nice option. And the tweed is, is really fun. So this sweater is made using two skeins uh, or two colorways. One with the, the teal tweed and the other one is a self-striping yarn um, so that's how you get this striped yoke. So there, it is a fantastic pattern for beginners. You don't have to do color work here. You just have to change the yarns. And it, it, I made it very long. It is very, very sweatshirty. So it's a, a perfect um, item to wear on a day like today where I'm at home and it is quite cold. And the cuffs and the bottom are made with a, I believe it's a three by one rib. Uh, I really, I like this one to wear at home. I find it very comfortable. Um, it, uh, you could make a smaller size if you, if you don't want as much positive yeast. You know, that would be something you could switch up. 
I do believe that I made the size large and it comes in a small, medium, large, and extra large sizing. All right, on to my Albertine jacket. So the last time I shared with you in my last episode, which would have been 17, and I believe today is episode 18, I had finished the body. So here we have it. I love the back. Probably my favorite part of the sweater is this motif that's right at the, the center of the back. I think that's just gorgeous. So what I did was I ordered from Amazon a little kit called a needle felting pad. But this kit not only included the little pad, and it's, it's quite dense, it's not super squishy, and it also included, very carefully packaged, the needles. The needles are incredibly sharp. I'm going to open it up and show you. I always keep it in the plastic because you wouldn't want to catch this with your fingers, I and mean, you would really puncture yourself. Uh, it's, it's extremely sharp, uh, extremely thin needles on it. So what this is for is for the steaking. People make little origami animals, I think, with this stuff. But what I wanted to try, instead of sewing on both sides of my steaks, so let's go back to the steak and talk about that. This here is called a steep. These are extra stitches that are not part of the pattern of the sweater. And the purpose of that is so that you can knit in the round all the time, so you don't have to do the dreaded purl side, and you're going to cut that and then turn it into a cardigan, okay? And what I did in the past with the other two cardigans that I steeped was I got my sewing machine out, here I'm having directional issues. And I did two rows of sewing, basic uh, stitches, just to hold the yarn in place. And then I took my scissors and I cut between those rows of sewing. And when you cut, you always want to, well, I would suggest putting something between your layers so you don't accidentally cut through the backside of your knitting. So I usually get a nice piece of cardboard. I slide it in the middle and then I cut just to keep uh, safe from having an accident. But what I wanted to do was try something different, and I'm really liking this so far. So I've only done one little part. There's a steak here where the sleeves will go in, and what I did was I put that little pad underneath, and then I took the needles, and I punched all over that steak and then I cut it, and it's not going anywhere. This is absolutely fantastic. It has really locked those stitches into place. Right here, it's just felted. The fibers have all sort of chunked themselves together, locked themselves into place. I can even pull it a bit, and I'm not seeing any unraveling whatsoever. And I really like this technique because, one, I find when I'm sewing, sometimes I can stretch out the fabric a little bit, and that kind of concerns me for getting a bit of a warp. You'll have to ex uh, excuse the background dog barking. Because of the wind, they're hearing all kinds of banging noises, and it's kind of freaking them out. Um, I turned the TV on, so hopefully that will help. So I also started uh, the steak here. I started needle punching this. And I'll turn it inside out, and hopefully you can see where I've been felting. Let me see if I can show you that. So I've been felting right here, down at the bottom, and this right here, I have not yet felted. So you can see, I hope, that those fibers have really just blended themselves together there. So when I cut those, they're locked into place. I'm finding the needle felting really satisfying. I, I just really enjoy punching it down repeatedly. I don't know what that's all about, but it's kind of fun. And it's quick, much faster than doing the sewing machine technique. So this is new to me, and I'm really liking it. So that is another way to deal with steaks. And if you've never dealt with steaks, 
it's not scary whatsoever. Like the first time I did that, I, I was like having a heart attack. But really, once you've done it, you think to yourself, why did I never do that before? This is so easy. So it just really gives you that opportunity to do color work in the round or just knit in the round if, you, if you're knitting plain um, knitting. But you really want to steep with rustic yarn. Uh, super soft is a lot more slippery, so I'm not sure that that would be the best choice um, if you aren't doing the rustic yarn. And this is uh, Hillesvog Ask, which is a 100% uh, wool. So I'm working on that, the steaks. And I did say in my last episode that I wanted to do the sleeves two at a time. And I went on Sidsil's Facebook page and I sort of put it out there to those people who have been knitting her projects. What do you think? Do you think this would work? And a few people said that they had done it before, but a couple of people said that it made the seams too thick. So I got a little rattled by that. I, I didn't want a lot of bulky fabric here uh, where the steep would be especially under the arms. So what I decided to do was the sleeves two at a time, but on two 3.5 millimeter needles. So I'm doing them simultaneously. I'm working on this one over here at the moment. And I'm doing them magic loop, which seems to work quite well for me. I don't mind magic loop. So I did, um, this one here first, and I'm putting little stitch markers in where I'm doing the increases. So I did all of it up to the color change here on one, and then I switched and did the same thing on the other. Now I'm doing um, this one up to the two increases so far, and I'm working on this one now up to those two increases. So I'm, I'm kind of doing two to three centimeters on one and then switching to the other and doing two to three centimeters. Is it kind of slow going? Definitely, you know, like you're doing the two sleeves at the same time, so it's a, a lot of knitting. But for me, I don't like sleeves. I find them really long. Uh, I really, at that point, want the project done. So this, for me, I think is a good method because when I'm done, I'm done. They'll both be done at the same time, and I won't have that, oh, no, I have to do another one moment. So that's working really well for me. Uh, you can see that there's a, um, a color change here. You keep the dark yarn, but uh, there's a color change into the cream, which matches the jacket here. Right here, there's going to be an enormous amount of duplicate stitch going on in a variety of colors. So I'm excited to do that and see how that's going to turn out because I think the cuffs are very, very beautiful in this project. All right, so that's my Albertine progress. So that brings me to uh, probably the smallest cow ever that's existed. I hosted a little knitting group over the holidays, just three people in total. We had done the Botanic Shawl together. I am still working on mine because I ripped it out and started the whole thing again, but I'm very happy with what I decided to do. And the, the cowl idea came up again. So there are only going to be myself and my friend doing this project, and we are going to be doing what's called the, let me see, I wrote it down, the Lindel Torkel. And the Lindel Torkel is sort of like a scarfy shawl. It's kind of like the Sophie shawl idea, where except probably a bit bigger. Um, it's uh, very scarf-like, and I really like that size of shawl. But this one is extremely colorful, and it has piles and piles of short rows in it. So I'm excited about that. Now that I have done the positive vibration shawl, I'm really into the short rows. And it requires or suggests a solid yarn. So I've decided to use this chocolate. Uh, it's super soft, 100% wool by Holst. And it's called coffee. 
So I decided to go with that as my main color or my solid color. And Holst Super Soft, they're not really solid colors. They have just such a beautiful um, mixed in blend of color. So there's little specks of um, orangey red in here. It's a beautiful, beautiful brown. And I'm going to pair that with this one, which um, is a slow color changing yarn. I'm not sure how slow, I haven't knit with it before, but this yarn is a full moon fibers yarn. And that is an independent dyer. I know one of them is called Jessica. I'm trying to remember the other one. They're uh, sisters, a pair of sisters who dye. They're from Ontario and they really do beautiful dyeing work. This is the Eclipse Fingering 2 Ply. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool and it's called Pumpkin Spice. I originally had chosen an aubergine purple with a white yarn with speckles and this one was one of the things I was thinking of as well, everything being from my stash. I'm really actively working on stash knitting this year. And I asked my daughter, Amy, when she came to visit, and she said, you know, Mom, you like certain colors, but they're not necessarily the best ones for you. And I think this combination is probably really your colors. So it's really hard for me to break away from purple because I absolutely love it, and I do tend to stick to the same colors all the time. But she really thought these would do the job. So I'll try to insert a picture of the Torkoal or, hold on, maybe, yeah, maybe I can show you this little picture that I have here. I'll just block out the writing of the pattern. So that right there is the Torkoal. And I'm really excited to give it a try. I think for me in 2024, my knitting goals include pushing myself a little bit more to try things um, that I have on my to-do list, but, you know, maybe I've not jumped headfirst in. So that's definitely one I've been thinking about doing for a long time, and I'm ready to get that going. All right, so the next thing I wanted to share uh, was a sweater that I had talked about before. I am going to make a sweater. This is my, uh, my little sample that I knit up. I'm going to knit a DK sweater. It is called the Simple Stripes DK. And I made the fingering uh, version by Suvi Knits. It is a wonderful basic uh, raglan style pattern. You could do anything with this pattern. Stripes, plain, whatever you want to do. Um, but I just found it to be a really well-fitting sweater for me. So I'm going to do the DK version. And I sort of asked everybody, should I do the striped ver version? Should I do a fade version? And I have to say I'm leaning towards the stripes. I, I just find stripes are very happy. Uh, I don't know what it is about stripes. I, I just really enjoy them. So this is using... Grab all of this. I haven't started it yet because I don't have any 3.5 needles available at the moment. They're all in use. But this is using a hand painted sock yarn from Pulse Garn uh, that I picked up in a sale. I got 10 skeins of 50 grams, so I've got more than enough. And I am pairing that with their alpaca, which is called Titicaca. So this is going to stay through the whole sweater, and then basically I just switch out these three colors in order to make those stripes. And the stripes are kind of delicate, like they're not bold or anything, um, except for maybe that bottom one, but I, I'm really liking the pink. I really like stripes. I find like doing a stripe a day of something is very motivating, and... This one really looks like cotton candy, you know? It just, I don't know, it really does something for me. So that's on my to-do list as well. Another um, sweater that I have got the yarn all set for 
is Caitlin Hunter's Alpine Bloom. I know a lot of people have done that sweater, and every time I see it, no matter what the colors, I just look at it and I know I want it. Uh, there, without a doubt, this is one I, I can't wait to wear. I am definitely a process knitter rather than a product knitter. I really thoroughly enjoy every part of making a garment or a cowl, a shawl, but this one, this one's eye candy. I just really want to wear it. I think it's so pretty. So what I'm going to make it out of is this Pulsegarn Super Soft Cone. And this is the elderberry colorway. I find that it's just so beautiful. And what I'm going to pair it with, and if you guys think this isn't going to work, please let me know. I have a bar at Tricot uh, in the champagne line. And the colorway is Lavender Smoke. This is 70% silk, 20% mohair, 10% nylon. And I just think that might, might really be pretty. I don't know. What do you guys think? I hope that would pop. It's not really coming out on the camera, but this has got um, different colors in it. It's got pale pink almost a whitey kind of pink and then a darker purple, but not as dark as this one right here. Anyway, those are some of the plans that I have going at the moment, but I do have a lot of whips to finish. Some of you are probably wondering, what happened to so-and-so or what happened to that sweater? I have them all still ongoing and at the moment, the Albertine is really grabbing my attention, and I just want to work through that and get it done and wear it while winter is still going on. So I will get back to all of them in due time. All right. So a couple of podcasts that I have been watching for a while that I wanted to mention today. Um, I'll start with the first one. The podcast is called PJ Knits. And Penny is the presenter. I've been watching her for quite a while. She has a great smile. She's lots of fun. She always starts her episodes off showing her mug of tea, and she has a different mug every time. I don't know where she stores them all. But she just makes me smile. She's very, very positive. And I've also joined in a few times with her Saturday evening uh, Zoom knitting group. And there's anywhere from 15 to 20 people that will pop in. And I find that is a lot of fun. So uh, she's one of the people I've been watching quite a bit in the last six months. And another podcaster that I wanted to mention is a podcaster from Quebec, Canada, which is also where I am. And she is under the name Trico Merengue. I will write this in the show notes so that you can find her. Her name is Vanessa, and she is so eloquent the way she speaks. Her podcast is in French, but she has excellent French. I'm not bilingual, and I can understand most of what she says. She pronounces everything really, really well, and she really has, chooses beautiful, beautiful, delicate patterns that suit her so well. So I just wanted to send a little bit of love out to her channel and see, you know, if you're interested, go check her out. All right, so that's my update. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is my one-year anniversary, potiversary. And my friend Tracy, uh, earlier in 2023, donated a few prizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the prizes, and I'm going to ask you to, in the comments, uh, tell me what you hope to knit on in 2024, and tell me which prize you would be interested in if you were to win. And I will give it about uh, three weeks to a month uh, to collect all of those comments, and then I will do the random uh, comment generator that does such a great job at picking uh, a winner and then that person will will get the prize so I've got three bags two of them are kind of like little bucket bags I've got this beautiful tan one with uh, this beautiful looks like plant design on it and 
This is Kali Cove, that seems to be the name of the bag. It's just gorgeous. You would be able to, you know, open that one up and kind of have your yarn in it and have it sit beside you. And it's got a couple of pockets inside. And it looks like it's lined with like a linen or a cotton. It's really, really pretty. And it's got the, the little tie at the top. The second one that she gave me is this lively little bucket bay. So, so pretty. This one really does open like a bucket and would sit so, so nicely if that's what you wanted. It's got leather handles. And the little tag here, it says button jar that seems to be the the maker button jar and beautiful lively colors so if that's your thing you could pick that one and the last one is a smaller little zip bag which would be really good for something like socks and the little tag says i love you on it inside it's lined so that would probably be a really great little uh, bag for on the go. Um, I would think socks would be perfect for that one. So write your comments. Tell me which one uh, you would like to win. And tell me what you are really looking forward to knitting in 2024. All right, before I leave you, I am just going to introduce the next segment. While I was at the family cottage in rural Ottawa, I finally... Finally, I got my oldest daughter to join the podcast. I've been asking, asking her to join for quite some time. Uh, she wasn't really sure about it, but uh, the day before I left, she got all her stuff out and said, let's do it. So we did, and she has shown quite a few of the knits that she has done uh, since she started knitting, and she also had a couple of things in the works. One is a Sitzel Hoivik sweater. A sun and sedestal and beautiful yellow sweater and she's also kind of adventured into Tunisian crochet so thank you for watching I hope you stay tuned uh, to watch my daughter and if you have enjoyed uh, this content don't forget to like and subscribe it is very motivating to keep going with these little episodes that I'm making all right take care everybody I hope 2024 has started off well for you bye Hi, and welcome to this little mini segment um, that I'm adding in. I am at the cottage for the very last day, and tomorrow I head back up north to where I teach. But I managed to convince my daughter, Amy, to join the podcast for the first time. Hello. <laughs> she has been knitting for quite a long time, and she's done some really wonderful projects. So she's going to share those with you today and hopefully share us with um, the new projects that she's working on and what she hopes to do in the future. So what we usually do is we start with what we're wearing and I'm wearing the Harley pullover. This is a sweater that is a pattern from Knit Picks and I also used a Knit Picks yarn for this. I used the Wool of the Andes Sport. Can't remember the colorway but it is one of their heathered colorways. And this design has a wonderful cable collar that you knit after you've made the sweater and you sew it on. And that would really be the only thing I might adjust is I would make it a little bit smaller so that it was more uh, standing up like a cowl. It has beautiful cables running down from the shoulder all the way down the arm and also down the side with a split hem at the bottom. Uh, and this wonderful braided little cable at the bottom with an I-cord bind off and this was a top-down sweater but it was complicated to get started with all of the stitch markers I ended up the very first time I made this having four shoulders instead of two so I had to rip it out and start again and I drew myself a graphic of where all the stitch markers were going to go where the cables would be and where the increases would be and once I got that in my mind it worked just fine so, Amy, why don't you talk about your sweater that you're wearing? Um, I'm wearing a uh, color work sweater that I made when I was about 13, we, we estimated. Um, it was one of, well, it was the first sweater that I ever knit. 
Um, it's, I, was it top down or bottom up? Do you remember? Um, I think it was top down because there's no seams around the, the yoke. Um, so yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, I continued with the body and then did each sleeve separately, but, um, yeah, it's, it's a very soft yarn. It's, um, a tweed yarn. This is, we looked it up this afternoon. This is the City Tweed Aran Weight from Knit Picks. I used to order a lot from Knit Picks when the exchange rate was a lot more favorable, and they have a City Tweed in a DK as well, which I've used a number of times. And you're right, it's 100% wool, but it is incredibly soft. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, and you've got a bit of color work on the, the cuffs as well. I do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the same pattern at the, the very bottom of yeah. the sweater. Right. Yeah, beautiful colors too, very very harmonious together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I am not the best at choosing colors, so I'm not, I'm not sure if it goes that well together. I was looking at it earlier, but I think it goes, it's okay. Yeah, I really like this one. I think it's very gentle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes contrast can be too much. This one, it's not too harsh a contrast, so you can wear it. It's very wearable. Yeah. All right, what else do you have to show us? Um, well, we decided to show my sweaters in chronological order, so... The next sweater I made, I'm not sure when this would have been, but um, it's this sweater. This sweater is called Walking on the Moon, and you can pick this uh, pattern up on Ravelry. Do you remember the name of the yarn? Um, Wonder Fluff. Wonder Fluff from Knit Picks. Mm -hmm. And it's very soft, very light. Um, uh, it has no weight to it at all. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's really tricky about this yarn is laundering it. And I made the same sweater in a pink and had a bit of a laundry disaster. So I've learned a lot since then. Really, you have to be very careful with this yarn. You also have to be careful about getting the water out and not letting the weight of it stretch because it's, it will stretch when wet and it will dry stretch. So it's one that needs uh, quite a bit of care. But we did this on, I think, 8 millimeter needles. Pretty large, so yeah, remember. pretty large needles. So it was a fairly quick knit, but a very pretty one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't worn it enough to have to wash it, but I'll have to ask you for advice when I do. Yeah, and it's one of those yarns where there is a tube, maybe it's nylon tube, and they blow the fibers into it, and it is wool. And so it makes it very, very light and airy, but very warm. Mm -hmm. All right, if you hear any background noise, the dogs are playing on the couch beside us. <laughs> we have that puppy that keeps uh, everybody on their toes. All right, so the next one. The next one is the same one. As I'm wearing, this was a gift knit because I made this for Amy. I can't remember if it was a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. Me neither. But it was <laughs> a gift, and I did not knit this myself, but... It is the same as my yeah, mom's wearing. it's got the same cable down the sleeves and down the side. And then it has the split hem as well. But my favorite, favorite part is the cable that's at the bottom here. I just find it so beautiful. With the I-cord especially, it really makes a really tidy finish. Mm -hmm. And it also has the, the cable collar. Yeah, so... I hope um, that she'll keep wearing that one for many years. For sure. And this sweater is, um, it's quite long. I'm a bit shorter than average. So it goes, um, you know, it's a good length. It covers me up, keeps me warm during the winter. It's kind of more like a tunic mm -hmm. length. Yeah, so exactly. good with skinny jeans or leggings, but really keeps your lower back warm yeah. when it's a day like today. And today's quite cold outside. All right, and next, I knit this, hmm, how long ago? Uh, it was like when you came to ago? visit me, maybe two years ago in January. Yeah. And COVID was going on, so Amy came to visit me, but there wasn't really much to do. So she decided to knit a sweater in about a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, she's a lot smaller than me, so to make a sweater for Amy is, a, is much uh, shorter. Yeah, and it's, it's this, I think, is the Goldwing by Jennifer Steingast. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, and um, yeah, we, I, I came to set so very unprepared with knitting. So, uh, of course, mom always has her, her piles of yarn laying around. So I just uh, went shopping in her knitting stash and she recommended that I try out this pattern. So I did. I, I had the option of doing the, this color in blue, um, but I was really drawn to this color. It's um, like a very gemstone. Yeah, very gemstone. Purple. purple. So. And this uh, at the bottom, that is Holst Super Soft. So that's a, a wooly wool, a very rustic wool. And the gray is, I believe, Tides from Holst. So that's 70% wool, 30% uh, silk. So the gray with that, like I like the gray rather than a white. I find that it works really well with that gemstone color. And one of the things that you noticed uh, about this sweater was was right about here, eh? You found that was a little bit snug. Mm -hmm. where, where the color work starts really. So um, yeah, the, the sweater fits well enough, but um, it is a bit tight across the shoulders. Yeah, so. like the lower, like sort of here. Mm -hmm. And what um, we were thinking, because I'd like to make this at some point too. I've never made a Jennifer Stein gas, but I'd like to do that at some point. We were thinking that maybe when you hit the color work through to where it ends, it would be worth going up a half size uh, in needle. I'm not sure what this was knit on, but maybe a 3.5, I'm guessing. Maybe go up to a 4 or 3.75 for that color work, just to make sure that it doesn't get too um, too snug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, beautiful. And this is, a, this is more of a cropped sweater, which uh, is very fashionable and cute. Um, but Amy's quite tiny, so, so that, you know isn't super cropped on her. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think it's cropped on me at all, actually. I think it's, it's perfect. It's perfectly um, where my pants start or stop, I should say. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. My pants stop, so. Yeah. So, yeah. So really, especially with the high waisted jeans, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. So Amy is currently working on, tell us about your current project. Um, I forget what it's called. Sun and Sedestal. Maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, this but. is a Sitzel Hoivik pattern, and I bought the yarn kit for Amy as a Christmas present a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the body that I've worked on so far. Um, it's, I love the, what's it called again? This part? The color work? Yeah, the color work in it. And... Um, I'm at the part where I'm increasing because the way that, or, so this is the the pattern. Let's see if we can get a, a good view of that. And as you can see, the the sweater has sort of drop sleeves. Is that yeah. what you call it? Yeah, drop sleeves. So where they're... yeah, the sleeves kind of start here at the upper arm. So I I don't really know how to say it, but I'm at the increase part where this almost becomes like part of the under the armpit. Okay. I, and and does it increase so that it kind of goes wide out here? I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's not quite at that part, but she's uh, almost there. Mm -hmm. And I have done, I have finished one sleeve. So it's the same color work as the bottom of the sweater. Um, and, and when you're done, you'll be doing, um, I think crocheted flowers that go on these, um, these little stars. Mm -hmm. And of course, Sitzel loves to do the crocheted edging, um, in like three different colors. So it looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, because the, the, the sleeves are drop sleeves, I didn't have to knit a sleeve cap or anything. I just... Um, continued going in the round and then once the sleeve is your preferred length you do your steep or not steep um, it's gonna be like the fold over interfacing mm -hmm. yeah so it strengthens where the join will be yeah so there's this and then you just fold it over and it disappears and it's just um, a nice and easy ridge to to sew um, the sleeve onto mm -hmm. the body of the sweater 
Now, Amy did find something interesting when she was doing the steaks on the sweater where the sleeves are going to go in because we've always been doing, when we've done um, these projects, we've always been doing full color work, but she's doing the little fleas, which only happen every third row. Uh, every fourth or fifth row. Um, so yeah, like we, I, I wasn't able to alternate the steaks with a, like um, a striping pattern. Um, so I, I did try to alternate when I could, um, but I hope, uh, I also real, I'm realizing that I made one little mistake, so that's okay. But in a steak, you're not going to see that afterwards, so that's okay. <laughs> I think it's my whole round, but it's okay. I oh. think I'm going to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> when you're podcasting, you start to notice things you didn't see before. Yeah, that's, that's okay. It's not noticeable when it's held up. I just missed, um, knitting one round. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, so hopefully um, not alternating the, the, the steaks as stripes will be okay. It, sh it should be fine. The only thing will be that it will be a little harder to cut. You won't see exactly where you're going to cut yeah. between the colors, but she's young and she has good eyesight. And I'm trying something with my Sitzel Hoivik project that I probably have already talked about in the first part of the podcast, which I haven't um, recorded yet but I am going to needle felt uh, my steak, so I'm not going to be sewing it on a sewing machine. That'll be a new thing for me, and I think you'll be able to do the same thing. I think that'll work really easily. So Amy's been working on a little bit of a new adventure. Um, I picked this book up because I fell in love with this, um, what I thought was a shawl, but it's more of a caplet. And this is a Tunisian crochet book, and it's a fabulous book. It has four sections. Well, really, the first section or half of the book is tutorials. It's teaching all of the different stitches. But then it has four sections of projects, starting from the simplest, uh, which is level one, ranging right to level four, which are very complex ones. But Amy, being like myself, she didn't really want to start with the easy stuff. So she started looking at a shawl, I think that was in the difficulty level three. Let me see if I can find a pattern while, while you pick uh, your project up, Amy. Um, I did want to say about this book, it was very um, helpful because um, at the beginning, it, sh it has images of um, like the step-by-steps um, instructions right all the, the samples of each stitch yeah yeah so I was able just to learn by the book I didn't have to look up um, any videos and this is what Amy's kind of playing with right now I've got a bit of a glare um, and this is a great one it is in the section three and it is the trailblazer shawl but it's a bit of a sampler because every section is a new stitch and she just kind of jumped right in. So I'll yeah, let you I talk I did. About that. Um, it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be a dishcloth, but it was you know just uh, maybe thirty stitches that I um, tested out at first. And uh, like every fifth row, I would just change the stitch. Um, so that was how I I first learned. Um, and then I just decided to rip that out and uh, um, re re. Um, we use the yarn um, to make the, the shawl that my mom just showed a picture of. And this is the result so far. Oops. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So yeah, you can see each of the different stitches so far. And I, yeah, I, I started right here, as you can see the little tail and um, just increased um, at the point of the triangle, and um, this is the result. And it, it is um, denser than crochet, but I really like dense uh, projects. They're very, I don't know, they just, it feels like there's more warmth to them. Well, it would block the wind, too, if you were to like put that mm -hmm. under your coat, you know, next to your neck. I do only know one other person who's ever tried the Tunisian crochet, and that's a teacher that I worked with. She doesn't work at my school anymore, but we've stayed in touch. And Leslie knit a scarf using Tunisian crochet. And what she said was that 
if you want more of a drapey fabric, you probably have to go up a couple of needle sizes from what your pattern is giving you because it does tend to be more dense than, than what we would be used to in the knit stitch. So um, I'm also not using the recommended yarn or needle size. Um, it was it was really just a tester project, so I don't know how much more I'll continue it. But at the point it's at, I was joking that it could be um, a bandana or a shawl for a caterpillar. So we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens with it. But, you never know. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm sort of reaching the end of it where I've, you know, I've tested enough stitches. I got you know the shape um, down. So. Yeah, I don't know if I'll, I would want to take that further. Um, another Tunisian crochet project I started today, actually, uh, we went um, quickly to the store just to get some cotton. And I want to try to make a dishcloth with um, a, a Tunisian crochet dishcloth, sorry. And it's it's always hard to see the color though it's a bit bright, but um Yeah, I think too that like it's trying to focus on on there we go. It's got little speckles. Yeah, it kinda of has to block <laughs> us, which is difficult with the, the two of us. I, I yeah, I started um Tunisian crocheting a dish box. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah. that's fun. And is that another stitch from what you were doing or one that you've already learned? Um this is a different stitch I'm trying. I'm not sure I'm not sure what any of the names are called, but uh, yeah, it's it's different. And I, I find it interesting how normally crochet just you only have the one stitch on your needle, but with this Tunisian you can hold many and have an interchangeable type of system, which uh, knitting we're used to, but but not with a crochet hook. So so that's uh, that's pretty neat. I can't wait to start it, but it's not going to happen at the moment. I have too many things to, to work on and I am in a little bit of uh, a cow which um, I'll talk about in the other segment. I just chose the yarn for it today so I'm excited about that. All right well thank you Amy for finally joining the podcast. All right take care. Bye. Bye.